King's Cross Station in London. I know it's Mission Impossible, but can you find out where we are with guards and drivers? One of Britain's biggest transport hubs. It's a logistical nightmare. I do suspect she is going into shock. And the gateway to the north along the East Coast main line. 400 miles of high-speed track stretching from the capital through the northeast and into Scotland. The task of keeping this vital part of the rail network up and running... Network rail control, York emergency phone. ..falls to a small army of railway men and women working behind the scenes... It's like playing with a huge big train set. ..and around the clock to keep the trains on time and us, the travelling public, on track. Yeah, I think someone who's done a wee. Platform nine. And on top of that, this year they're under pressure to complete one of the biggest investments in the railway since Victorian times. We've got passengers stuck in a lift on number six and seven. All aboard for the ups and downs. Yes. Yes, down. Of life on the railway. This week at King's Cross. Staff deal with the most unpredictable part of life on the railways. It's like a witching hour or something like that. <laughs> Us, the travelling public. Does anything phase me? <laughs> no. A tube strike causes problems above ground as well as below. Passengers, I feel really sorry for them. This is bad. And on a platform, the unthinkable happens. We've got something here. I'm down in the train. I'm going to home five. Uh, she's bleeding. She's King's Cross, one of London's busiest stations, where 200,000 visitors come and go every day. And it's never busier than at evening rush hour. Staff must stay alert. Oh, gosh, you all right, darling? Yes, I'm okay. Do you want to take my hand? Yeah. They also need to keep cool when pressure causes sense of humour failures. Don't touch me. Why touch me? People just get stressed out when they're travelling. I just want to get from A to B. For the hard-working staff who do their best to keep King's Cross running smoothly... What, what train is this? I have no idea. ..each day brings new challenges. I just want to make sure you're OK, all right? OK. Among those on shift tonight is PC A.D. Young, one of Britain's 3,000 British transport police who keep our railways running smoothly. There are plenty of things that come your way, especially in the transport police, from people that get aggressive towards members of railway staff. We get shoplifting from the shops here, providing assistance when someone falls ill. It can be anything and everything, and we just deal with whatever comes our way the best way we possibly can. Hidden above the station's 12 platforms is the control room, the eyes and ears of King's Cross. Stand by, George. Andrew, who started his career as a train guard, is now a network rail station control assistant, and he's just come on shift. There's one minute we could be sitting here, like we are now talking, and five minutes time we could be dealing with something, you know, so you just deal with it as it comes in. It's coming up to peak rush hour at King's Cross, and a call has just come in about an incident on the concourse. Yeah, I've just heard the radio. Whereabouts was it? A passenger is in distress, and Officer Aidy's ready to respond. Hello, are you OK? An elderly woman has accidentally collided with a commuter near the main entrance. I've got two broken shoulders. Right. Because the woman has pre-existing injuries, she's worried she may have caused further damage to her shoulders. Yeah, I could have uh, LAS... Uh to London King's Cross. So what's happened? No, 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 no. We bumped into each other. each other, really. Yeah. <laughs> At the station, a uh, lady almost kind of bounced off me and went crashing to the floor. So it, it's troubling. <laughs> While they wait for an ambulance, as luck would have it, a junior doctor passes by. Hi, my name's Harry. Hi, what's your name? Of all the places to uh, 
to fall over. It's uh, probably the busiest part of the station, hence why we've put the screens up, just to sort of stop people from accidentally trampling into us. So. As the rush hour builds up, Aidy's anxious that the ambulance arrives soon. I do suspect she is going into shock, so if we can uh, relay that. Do you have any pain in your neck or your shoulders? No. Okay, just going from uh, what the uh, doctor was saying, uh, she may have uh, more serious injuries than we first thought, so we have to uh, perhaps proceed on the basis that she may have a broken hip. Despite the pain, this woman knows a good-looking man when she sees one and thinks James Bond has come to her rescue. Daniel Craig? Well, <laughs> well, Sylvie, that's the kindest thing I've heard all day, but I, I wish I did look like... Uh, I wish I did look like Mr Bond, but... <laughs> I just thought you may have banged your head. That's why you thought I looked like Daniel Craig. <laughs> 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 sorry. <laughs> I must have made you giggle, sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, it's good that she's in good spirits, although she's getting... Uh, seems to be fading a little bit at the moment. Thankfully, the paramedics are now on hand and the helpful young doctor can continue on his journey. Really, really appreciated. All right. And lift. Put the big hat on, just for you. With the injured woman now safely away from the crowds, for 007, or Officer AD, it's another Bond girl saved. Yeah, the lady at King's Cross is all uh, strapped up on a spinal board on her way to UCH. Passenger safety is a top priority. There are CCTV cameras, regular police patrols and vigilant station staff. But even with that, awful things can still happen. On platform five, a woman has fallen through the gap between the platform and a train, just as it was leaving the station. Station staff now have a major emergency on their hands. We've got somebody, a female, on the train, on platform five, uh, she's bleeding. The station's got an emergency on its hands. A woman has just fallen under a train as it was leaving the station. Station staff and emergency teams have responded within seconds, and it's all hands on deck. All I'm aware of is that a person is uh, under the train presently. I'm not sure how that's, how that's occurred. Yeah, the fire brigade, the ambulance service, police. Uh, there's also network rail staff and virgin train staff. Okay, you might as well get that out of the way, mate. As more emergency staff arrive at the scene, it's a scary few minutes to find out how serious the incident is. She's alive, that's what I know at the moment. Hopefully she stays that way. While emergency teams work to recover the woman from the tracks, station staff have to clear the area of passengers. We're going to get people off the train. They were initially on the train, so they're now coming back and going onto platform zero. Platform zero is just over there. The emergency response teams gently pull the injured passenger up onto the platform. And the man who's headed up the operation knows just how close a call the woman's had. As we arrived, we confirmed that the casualty was alive, breathing, suffered quite a few injuries, but relatively minor, considering she's been in collision with the train. It could have been quite serious. Luckily, she was trapped between the train and the platform where there's a bit of room, so it could have been a lot worse. The passenger is rushed to hospital, but she's talking. And while her injuries are serious, she's expected to make a good recovery. It's been a traumatic, not to mention unusual day for station support assistant Lee and the team. The one and only time we've had it here in the three years I've been here. So. Yeah, it's uh, different, not your everyday. Uh, she's um, she's going to be all right, so yeah, her injuries aren't life-threatening, so it's good. <laughs> King's Cross Station has come a long way in the 165 years since it was built. Five years ago, Network Rail completed a £600 million revamp of the building. 
and the 150-meter steel-structured roof designed by John McCaslin is the showstopper. For station manager Laura, it's been money well spent. So this is probably one of my favorite parts of the station. It's the perfect place to stand and kind of look over the concourse. Gives you a full picture of just how many people there are using the station at any time. It's a beautiful view, architecturally. Just kind of shows how far the station's come. But King's Cross is more than just a station. It's also a portal into another world, where magic happens. And all walks of life are on parade. Only some visitors aren't always welcome. Particularly at lunchtime. So Network Rail have their very own winged crusader to deal with them. Come into King's Cross Station with, with Aria here. She's a Harris Hawk. And um, we come in to scare the pigeons away from the building. Uh, she comes in every day at the moment for about four hours each day. Does that. She's more of a, a tourist attraction than anything else. I think she keeps, keeps the commuters happy, obviously coming through and they're seeing something like this. It's, it's a nice thing to see in the middle of London. Monday morning, 8 a.m. And for Virgin Trains information controller Lindsay, the shift hasn't started well. We've got an underground strike, tube strike, which is affecting, obviously, passengers travelling on the tube. The bus journeys are a bit mad, taxi queues are huge. It's not going to be a nice day in London today for passengers. I feel really sorry for them. King's Cross St Pancras is the biggest interchange station on the London Underground. And a 24-hour tube strike is causing major disruptions. Passengers arriving for overground trains are late, and passengers who would normally hop on the tube now want to go by rail. Hello. Let's go to Oakley Park. Oakley Park. Yes. Let's see how you can get there. It's just been madness, mate. Yeah, I know. You missed the train because of the tube, did you? Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people coming in. They planned this months ago, planned their journey into King's Cross. Thought the tube would be running, they could get to where they wanted to. But unfortunately, um, they can't. So we've dropped, sort of kind of got the underground staff as well today a little bit and uh, try and direct people the right way. Two seconds, I'll be right back. I've just got to check the platform. It's late. The train's running. Yeah. 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 Train's running. Our train's running. It's going to be one of those days. I just hope this our service runs all right tonight. The last thing we need is more, more uh, disruption. Have attention, please. Special notice of passengers travelling on the 10.03 right. version East Coast Isn't service there? to Leeds. There's been an incident at Tuxford and the East Coast main line is blocked. So there's going to be delays on the overground train, well, on the main line trains as well. So there's going to be delays in London King's Cross as well as delays for the underground. Dealing with cancellations is one thing, but Lindsay's problems will really start once the incident's cleared and the backlogged trains start running again. The thing is, it's not too bad until it hits you and then it goes all like crazy because the train's being delayed and being stuck somewhere and they're not on the station, obviously. It's quiet because there's nothing to do. But as soon as they start coming in the station and you're getting your delayed trains, you need your announcements, you need your estimated boarding times and everything, that's when it starts to um, affect the station. Just along from the station is the King's Cross signal box which guides 800 trains a day into the capital. And this is where Graham Smith and the team are dealing with the day's disruptions. Yeah, obviously it's a, it's a bit of a juggling act if uh, there's disruption on the network where something happens, uh, you'll, you'll find there's an element of uh, chaos. This train is coming along here, One Echo Zero One, is the train that was involved in the incident at Tuxford. All the other trains have had to uh, be stacked behind it uh, and have been delayed subsequently as well. There will be some of the trains that have been kept at stations at Doncaster, for instance, maybe York, maybe Leeds, uh, which would have been cancelled. Uh, and the knock-on effect is all those trains are running late as well. 
Back inside King's Cross, the delayed trains are starting to arrive. Put a 25-minute delay on it. Now Lindsay has to get them back out again as soon as possible. Papa's kilos, please be on the platform. This train is a quick turnaround. But unfortunately, too quick for some. Who's on the train? Jimmy. He's got locked on the whole train. Mm. <laughs> Lindsay's got her hands on her head. Jimmy, a station customer service assistant, was helping customers onto the train when the doors locked behind him. Well, he's first off Grantham on that one. <laughs> With a valuable member of staff off on an unexpected excursion, for Lindsay, the day's going from bad to worse. <laughs> he's on his way to Grantham, so yeah, tube strike. Uh, Yankee going to Grantham. Hiya. After a three hour round trip up country, Jimmy finally returns. Jimmy, what happened, mate? Well, he can't help it, can he? Basically, I just put someone on a train, and before I could get off, set off. So uh, I went to Grantham <laughs> and back. How was Grantham? Windy. <laughs> Windy. As rush hour hits, the ripple effects of the morning's events take their toll. But staff are still up for a challenge. If your journey here is delayed, so you're now 20 minutes, 30 minutes late coming into King's Cross, so you've got to wait half an hour at least for a cab, and then the traffic on top of that on the road is horrendous. It's like the witching hour or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me strength, Mickey. Yes, young ladies, how can I help you? But one long-serving member of staff, Mickey, has a well-used technique to avoid any difficult situations at the ticket barriers. Is that your younger sister? <laughs> Who's the senior citizen? You sure? I don't believe so. You haven't got a young person's card? <laughs> Never try and upset them. Just boost their ego. That's what they like. And if I miss this, can I get the 1605? Is Absolutely. That still, is Absol that still... For you, anything. <laughs> Thank you. Come along here, please. Come along here. Madam, that dress was just made for you. <laughs> Exit that way, please. Exit that way. But there's always someone who's resistant to any form of courtesy. Three members of staff informed you of what you need to do, and you carried on. Because I had to, I, I spent four hours. The day's disruptions have got too much for this potential passenger, who's been told that his ticket isn't valid. In frustration, the man has pushed station support assistant Corey, and as there's zero tolerance towards such behaviour, the police have been called. No, you touch me, you don't need to touch me. Like, okay, like I didn't touch you. Where, where, yeah, you, you did, to be fair, sir. No, no I did not. Uh, we're, we're not happy with him travelling because of his attitude. I'm to nick him, but I don't want him to travel today. Corey doesn't want the man to be arrested, but simply wants him off the station to find another way home. Corey wants the gentleman to know, obviously, that it's not acceptable and he can't travel with doing that sort of thing. So he'll learn his lesson because today he won't be travelling from King's Cross. Go straight through, straight to get on the train, please. And Lindsay can now put her colleagues at network control at not ease. Too bad, not too bad. Everything's fine, you know. I mean, the concourse isn't that busy, which I'm quite surprised. And the taxi queue's gone down. Um, so it's not, it's not really that bad, if I'm honest with you. At last, Lee can finally clock off. It's been a long and stressful shift. Um, I'm glad this isn't every day on the underground because it just shows how many people use it. Because we've been absolutely hammered all day long. I'm glad to get home. King's Cross Station welcomes over 30 million passengers a year, and we'd like you to be one of them. We'll send you and a friend to London, staying right on the doorstep at the St Pancras Renaissance Hotel in a superior King room with breakfast for three nights. There you can relax after your travels in the hotel pool and enjoy dinner in the booking office restaurant. You'll have a London travel card to make the most of central London, avoiding rush hour, of course. Plus, we'll include a King's Cross walking tour so you can look out for familiar faces from the series as you explore the area. So, for your chance to win, text RAIL to 65515 or call 0904 161055 or post your name and phone number to RAIL, PO Box 7557, Derby, DE1, 0NP.
Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. Calls cost £1.50 plus your network access charge. Lines close at midday on the date shown on the screen and three working days later for postal entries. For rules, go to channel5.com forward slash win. Good luck. Every day, nearly a quarter of a million people pass through the doors of King's Cross. But not all of them to catch a train. Some come for the food. And others for the entertainment. But sadly, there's another kind of regular visitor. The homeless. Nearly 1,000 people sleep rough each night in London and British Transport Police Officer Dan Corton often finds them at the station. It's a large public place, King's Cross, so it's going to be a hot spot for, for homelessness because a lot of people see the, the shelter and you have the benches and there's a lot of people also, so that leads to a lot of begging. But we're working on it, that's why we do our patrols here to deter it, to prevent it. Hello, madam. Yeah, OK. Have you, um, have you spoken to the council? Are they helping you? Because we want to help them as well, interact with these people and get to know their circumstances. Because if we just move them on, they're only going to come back. And especially if we arrest them, they don't usually have the money to pay for the fines. And you're just criminalising people for being in a circumstance, really. Dealing with people in the confines of the station is one thing. But when they're out on the track, it's an entirely different problem. Hello there. Jerry is the route control manager for the East Coast Main Line that runs from King's Cross to Edinburgh. Whereabouts was it? Featherston. He's based at Network Rail's state-of-the-art operating centre in York. This is where they deal with any problems that arise on the 400-mile track and its branch lines. And today, they've got an intruder on the tracks. We've got a report of a male trespasser on the line from West Yorkshire Police, somewhere in the Featherston area. Complex bit of railway. Um, we don't necessarily know the exact location. In situations like this, Jerry follows a strict protocol, allowing trains to run, but making sure everyone is safe. What would happen in most instances like that is that we'd end up what we call cautioning trains. Effectively, that means they've got to be prepared to stop short of any obstruction or person. Thankfully, this incident ends well, and the man leaves before the police arrive. But for Jerry and the team, unwelcome obstructions are a constant hazard. There's a multitude of issues that can occur and affect us. I mean, it, it ranges from a, a straightforward signal failure through to a person being struck by a train, which is highly disruptive, um, animals and third parties going on the line. 40 miles away from York, Jamie of Network Rail's mobile operations unit is on his way to the Barnsley-Sheffield section of the network where today he's playing pet detective. We've um, had a report of um, a, a train driver thinks he might have hit a dog um, between Swave Viaduct and Wunwell Station. So we're going to go and um, have a walk around, see if, see if he has hit a dog. And, um, and obviously, if he has, then obviously if he's still alive, we'll do what we can. And if it's not, then we'll do what we can as well. So, But it's not the dog he's most worried about. All the or majority of dogs have got owners, so the problem is that if the owner thinks it's gone on the railway, they'll try and get on the railway to find the dog. With two years' experience as a mobile operations manager, Jamie knows how deadly the tracks can be for the uninitiated. Trains are passing you on here at 70 mile an hour. So, um, yeah, the silent trains, people don't realise how quiet they are. Before you know they're there, they've, they've already either hit you or passed you. So, yeah, very dangerous, and obviously you don't get a second chance with a train, so... Jamie also knows the cost to the railways of unwelcome trespassers in whatever form they take. It's phenomenal, really. What can start off as just delaying one train um, because there might be a dog on the line, which we have to do, obviously, because we have to. Um, the train behind that's then delayed. The one behind that might not be able to get across a junction, which then puts the delay to the one behind that, and so on and so forth. And before you know it, you might have 100, 200 minutes of delays, or, or perhaps even more than that, just because a dog were on the line. And then a discovery which makes Jamie think this might be more than just a shaggy dog story. Oh, it looks like a doggy bone, Columbo. 
bit of a clue perhaps. But no dog. Back at King's Cross, customer service assistant Denise has also had a call about unwelcome visitors. Two homeless men apparently in the same toilet, but one of them does a quick runner. Someone's just walked out of there and there's someone else in here. Are you all right there? Denise used to work as a door supervisor and knows how to handle difficult situations. She suspects the men could have been using drugs. Have you got any BTP downstairs? Officer Dan's on duty again and is ready to respond to Denise's call for backup. He's opened the door now. No, we not the door. We did. I even asked if you were OK. No, we wanted to know if you was fine. You shouldn't have been two of you in the toilet. Denise and her colleagues search the toilet for any sign of drug abuse. Meanwhile, Officer Dan has a chat with the man who's just left the toilet. Were you in the toilet, sir? Uh, I was having a wash, yeah. Was that, who was that with? Uh, no, there was a little beaver with me, yeah. The man admits to using the toilets, but he says it was harmless. Uh, I was having a wash. Uh, because it's the only place. It's over that or McDonald's, so... Uh, Someone walked into the toilet and they thought uh, I was in there with him smoking drugs. That was it, but as you heard, they warned me not to come in there again, so... It's a very regular occurrence. Almost, almost daily we have something like that. Very minor uh, main social behaviour that we deal with by way of asking them to leave the station. And there's nothing to point to the fact there was any drugs, so there's no more action we could take on that. Back out on the road in Yorkshire, Pet Detective Jamie has had another tip-off about the mystery of the dead dog. The latest report I've got is that um, a track walker has seen a, a dead dog in the forefoot of the track, which is in between the rails, basically. Um, so we're just going out now to uh, to retrieve it, really. Yeah, you need a strong stomach to do what we do, definitely. You can get some pretty nasty smells coming out, sheep and dogs and various animals, so, yeah, can be quite nasty at times. Found it. Do you know what? I think they've had it away. The owners must have found out, wouldn't they? Oh, God. Basically, we can see where the dog used to be, the dead dog. Um, so, it's one of two things might have happened. Either an animal's come and taken it away and eaten it, or... The owners found out it's here somehow from dog walkers. We do get a lot of dog walkers up here. And the owners have come and took it back thinking that we'll just dispose of it without letting them know, which has happened in the past, to be fair. So, the mystery of the dead dog. Right, march on. British Transport Police are vital support when the need arises. But King's Cross's station staff usually have it all under control. Customer service assistant Michael knows what it takes to keep everything up to speed. Some people just get on a train, buy a ticket, travel, and they think that's all there is to it. Yeah, that's right. But um, we prepare, we, we have to actually maintain and look after the railways. It's, it's a lot harder job than people actually realise. <laughs> and Michael has his own way of keeping things in harmony. Right. Hey. That's the sound of the man who's working on the chain. Yeah, that's the sound of a man who's working on a chain. OK, this is my playground, basically, King's Cross Station. Despite his light-hearted approach, Michael takes the darker side of life at King's Cross very seriously. So part of my job is to actually look out for places where unattended or baggage or something dangerous can be hidden. Well, everywhere has to be secure. Michael knows every nook and cranny of King's Cross, but it's the station's personalities who light up his day. Please do not take luggage onto the escalator. Here, we've got our friend. Her name is Digital Doris. A very nice couple we make, don't you think? Always vigilant, Michael is ready for anything that might crop up. And today, it's his medical skills that are needed. Alpha 5-2 Alpha. Uh, Michael, I've just yes, received a call from Great Northern 
A first aider is requested. No problem, I'm on my way. Thanks, Michael. Uh, we've got to deal with a first aid incident. Um, a lady just um, had an accident at Welling Garden City. But as nurse Michael attends to his patient... Are you OK? Is there, are you in any pain at all? Another call comes in from the control room. I've had reports from a customer that they... Uh... Michael can't be in two places at once. Urgent police required on the station square, please. And the boys in blue step in. My word is, lads. Got reports of a fight out here, I see. Well, why are you touching me like that? Because you're fed, yeah? Relax. You don't swear at officers, you don't swear in public, all right? right? Do you understand? I'll just you leave now. Right. Any scuffles seem to be over, so the officers move the lads on. In the first aid room, Michael goes the extra mile for his patient. Just manoeuvre yourself into the chair. Well, I'm experienced, so you don't get this kind of service everywhere, do you? Yeah? <laughs> hey, listen, hey, listen, 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 listen. Move away, mate. Outside, the lads have returned, causing yet more disturbance. Go and get your jacket. I'm told to leave, mate. Just go find somewhere else, mate. Get your head down, or you can get nicked, understand? With these troublemakers now gone, Michael's dealing with another tricky situation. Alpha 5 to control. An abusive passenger is showing threatening behaviour on a train that's just arrived into Platform 10. Sorry, um, the, the gentleman, you, um, one of your staff was calling for someone, that, um, a drunk, wasn't it? Yeah, he's got a bottle in his hands. If you get upset, then okay. they might smash you as well. Um, well, I can, if he's got a bottle in his hand, I'll probably find out who the gentleman is. But I need to make sure everyone's safe. Michael decides the soft approach is best. Unfortunately, someone called the British Transport Police, bro. And no, 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 but I don't want you to get in trouble with them. So basically, if you just leave the station, they won't do nothing. I have to, well, so where am I going to go then? Come on. But no, 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 but the last thing I want you to do is to get in trouble where you don't need to be in trouble. Yeah, no, no, but do you understand? I'm saving you a hassle right now. Michael's had to deal with many drunk passengers in his time. And because he's a Londoner, there's not much he hasn't seen before. You have to be able to deal with situations and use your skills to be able to deal with them effectively. I don't get flustered by much. See, there's something about growing up in South London, you have to... <laughs> yeah. You still have a chance to win this three-night getaway for two to the home of this series, London. You'll stay in a superior king room at the St Pancras Renaissance Hotel with breakfast, a dinner and a walking tour of King's Cross. To enter, text RAIL to 65515 or call 0904 161055 or post your name and phone number to RAIL, PO Box 7557, Derby, DE1, 0 MP. For rules, go to channel5.com forward slash win. Every day at King's Cross, nearly 500 trains come and go from its platforms, and almost a quarter of a million people walk its concourse. Keeping so many people and their trains in sync is no mean feat. And to pull it off, you need a firm hand and a firm voice. This is a passenger announcement for Mary Pablinko. That's Mary Pablinko, believed to be on the station. Would you please make yourself known to a member of staff at the customer information point situated on the main departure concourse. When things go wrong, that's our job, yes, to, to make sure the public down there are informed of what's actually happening. We would always do a sort of standard message and then until we have more information. After four years of practice, station control assistant Andrew has mastered the skills of the job. This is a passenger announcement for Mrs Sheila Robb. Mrs Sheila Robb, believed to be on the station. Could you please make yourself known to a member of staff at the customer information point situated on the main departure concourse? Andrew's boss, station control manager on, is an admirer. It's fantastic. He's very professional when he comes across on the radio. But today, Network Rail's customer service assistant, Denise, is taking a turn in the control room. Usually she's out on the platforms, but occasionally she takes on other roles. And this is one of her least favourite. Just don't make me do silly announcements. I get nervous on the, the tannoy in case I say something wrong. 
There to lend a hand and offer moral support is shift station manager Rebecca. There is a booklet somewhere about what to say. It says don't use any colloquial language or abbreviations. Denise gets in some much-needed practice. Due to the inclement weather, please make sure you're wearing your wellies. <laughs> this is a safety announcement. That's it. Due to the inclement weather, please take care when on the station or something like that. <laughs> But news has come in of a train delay, and this time it's the real deal. This is a passenger announcement. Passengers awaiting the 1152 train to Cambridge. We apologise for the delay due to a technical fault. <laughs> I always get confused what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> It's not chiming. Oh, done it. Passengers waiting for the 12.03. Train to leave. We apologise for the delay, as this was due to an earlier incident. <laughs> you forgot, I you? forgot what the incident was. As Denise struggles with the tannoy, down on the platforms, shift station manager Dexter is doing his rounds. Nativa, thanks. Nativa, Nativa. Dexter's been working at King's Cross for 13 years, and he's moved up through the ranks. I'm a station manager responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the, of the station. If anything goes wrong, they're going to look to you to, like, fix things. It's a challenging job, but Dexter takes it all in his stride. I don't really stress out, and I try to advise people on how not to be stressed out at work. Keeping his cool during today's shift won't be easy. Obviously, apart from being stuck in the lift, is everybody OK? On is back in the station control room chair, alongside information controller Lindsay. He's concerned about passengers trapped in the basement lift, and he's just found out that one of the women is pregnant. She's saying that she's pregnant and has got a child with her as well. Have you still not got any service on your phone? The trapped passengers speak to the control room via the lift's phone. You need to ring Dexter. Control, mic one. Pass a message, please, over. Dexter, just heard some information with the lady again. The lady leaves me out on minus one level. That's minus one. Hello? Hello? I learned that someone in there is pregnant. Is you. Um, how are you holding up, though? <laughs> You're OK. Are you sure? To make matters worse, the passengers are all due to catch the 11.48 to Hull. It's leaving in 20 minutes, but the engineer still hasn't arrived, so who knows if they'll get out in time. The engineer for the lift will be here in about 15 yeah, copy minutes. That. We'll pass. It's a race against the clock. We have called the engineers. They should be here in about 15, 20 minutes. It's not sort of a thing you would like to happen on a Monday morning, but it does happen. Hi there, yeah, receiving. No sign of engineer yet. Still waiting, so. Receiving. They're talking with each other, that's the most important thing. And they're not really flustered, they're, they kind of understand the situation. Although the lift passengers don't know when they'll be freed, there's some helpful news about their train. It's um, got a delay on it, so it won't, be, it won't be departing on time. For once, a train delay could be a good thing. So it's around 44 minutes late, so then it would take time to be cleaned up. So hopefully, by the time the lady would be out of the lift. <laughs> Stan is here now. They just arrived. Are you OK? Yeah, it's just person trapped in the lift. Thankfully, it doesn't take long for the engineer to fix the fault and the passengers can catch their delayed train. They're all on the train, so um, it could have been worse, but today everyone is happy. You just got to stay calm. That is the whole thing. There's only so much you can do. But once you stay calm, the little that you can do, you can do it really well. So. 
It's late evening at King's Cross Station. It's nearly the end of another packed day at one of the capital's busiest transport hubs. The commuters and tourists have long gone and the station takes on a different vibe. With another type of passenger, the, the late-night party animals. Dealing with them is like a job in itself, which is when station support assistant Denise's past security experience comes in handy. My last job, I was a doorman. Nice is better because it's hands-off. I ain't got to physically pick people up and chuck them out the door. I like night shifts. Different sort of passengers. The odd fight might happen. People complaining about trains. Piss heads. I'd rather drunks than normal people. <laughs> because they've got an excuse for being arseholes. Although sometimes they go too far. Yeah, I think someone who's done a wee. Platform nine. Honda Sesh, Honda Sesh. Does anything phase me? No, not on a night shift. Where's the mate? This is actually, it's a very good job actually. We get paid to talk to people. Where are you going? Yeah. Where do you want to go? Uh, want to Hatford first. Oh, you want to go to Hatford? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, or Hatfield? Yeah. Hatfield? Yeah. Do you want me to find out what train you've got to get? Ooh. You're welcome. Shall we find out where your train is? Yeah. Come on in. One eleven, yeah. platform nine. Potter's Bar, yes. yeah? No, I'm just saying, I've got my heart. British Rail start of exemplary. Network Rail. As the last trains leave for the night, there are some passengers who just can't be helped. Right. He's trying to catch it. Do you think he's going to catch the train? Mm, no. Platform nine, you've got a minute. Nine. Nine! Platform nine! Ready? Eleven. Where do you want to go? Uh, Hitchin. Miles. That's not going to be a good one, is it? Sit now till the morning. Sit till the small morning, I'm afraid. Picture of someone who's just missed their train. There we go. Next time. We'll get you on the next train. Sometimes it's our fault we missed the train, which is. It's a clash between old and new on the railway. Technology is moving forward, but we're getting there slowly. <laughs> From the old school ways of the past. So I'm what's known in the trade as a dinosaur. I don't know why I always sing 80 songs, but I do to the trackside and airborne technology of the future. You can see the rail is burning very hot, so that is a classic fault for us. And the 21st century threats now facing the nation's busiest stations. The call has been made of a creditable threat to the station. And that's all inside King's Cross Commuter Cross next Monday at 9. Next tonight, who can forget the furore surrounding the trial of O.J. Simpson? But did his wealth and fame influence the trial? Brand new rich and acquitted is in a mole.